Hi everyone, in this video I want to show you how to create a macrame pot hanger. Let's get started. So we're going to start by embellishing the hoop. And we're going to do that by creating a series of single half hitches. So we're going to attach the cord leaving a small tail of about 5 centimeters, and we're looping the cord around the hoop. And then we're feeding the loose end through the resulting loop like that so over the hoop and then through the loop pull that tight and then repeat so it's quite a simple procedure so all we're doing basically is looping the um the rope around itself and then the the hoop as well so just pull that tight and then we're going to repeat this until we have um covered most of the hoop except for about a five centimeter gap at the bottom where we're going to be attaching the next series of cord so just continue around. So next we're going to take our cord, the next set of cords, and fold it in half. And we're going to feed it from over the top and then feed the legs through the resulting hoop. And the reason why we're doing it from over the top is so that the little loop shows at the front. And that's called a lax head knot. So next we're going to take the rope and we're going to feed it from behind and then again through the resulting loop and this is to show the little loop at the front as well so we're going to feed the cord through and obviously make sure that you before attaching it to have the rope folded in half at equal length so we're going to do the same on the other side and we're going to be attaching the, the other three cords as well and if you feel there's not enough space you can always undo one of the uh, single half hitches to create more space so just attach the other cords so you have four in total. So the next step is to create our actual design. So I'm pinning this to my board with a T-pin and I am separating out the four innermost cords like so. So the two central cords are going to be our core cords and the left hand and the right hand outmost cords are going to be our knotted cords. So we take the left hand cord first and we folding it over the two central cords and the right hand cord folds under the central cords and out to the left. Next we're going to pull this tight. It helps if you grab hold of the two central cords that gives you a little bit more of a, an easier option to pull this cord tight. So we're going to repeat this just in the opposite direction. So we're folding the right hand cord over the central two legs and feed the right hand cord underneath and then out towards the right. So pull that tight. So next we need to create knots on the right and the left hand side of these. So we're going to separate out uh, the remaining cords into four, four cords on the left and then four cords on the right. So to begin with we're going to be working with our four cords on the left and we're repeating exactly what we did just now and having two central core cords and we fold the left hand cord over those two central cords and then feed the right hand cord underneath and out the little loop on the left and then we're going to pull this tight so this time we're going to leave a little bit of a gap in between the top and the new knot so that there is a bit of a netting effect this is how we create the netting effect so i'm just elongating this a little bit and we're going to be closing off that knot by coming from the opposite direction and we feed the left hand cord underneath the core cord and up towards the right again to complete and this is again another lax head knot and the whole design is made up of lax head knots so there's nothing else that uh, we need to learn so it's a pretty simple design because it's very repetitive so next we're going to repeat this process with the four remaining cords on the left. So we're going to take our left hand cord, outmost left hand cord and our outmost right hand cord knotted around our core cords. And then remember if you put your finger over the two central core cords it helps you to, to slide the knot along. And just make sure that the gap is equal um, and that the knots, the two knots you're creating are sitting at the same level. And then obviously we're going to close this off and pull the knot tight. And you can manipulate. This is quite easy to manipulate the knots. If you aren't really happy, you can push and pull and tighten it or loosen it. 
to make sure that they are all sitting at the same height. So next we need to close off the middle. So we're having a little bit of a diamond and we're going to come back to the central cords and we are creating a lark's head knot in the middle with the four innermost cords. So once again, left hand cord first and make sure that the gap between the knots is the same before you create the second half of the knot. And once you're happy, we're just folding the right hand cord over the core cords and the left hand cord underneath the two core cords and out towards the right. Pull these tight. And that's the first section created. So now just make sure everything is nice and tight. So the next step is adding in more cords. So we cut our cords and we're going to be attaching these with lark's head knots um, on each side. So we're folding this in half. Again, remember to come from over the top so that the loop sits at the front. And this time we're not going to separate out the two cord ends. We're just going to make a lark's head knot and attach it. So just make sure it's folded in half so it's got equal length and feed the two cord ends through the resulting loop and we are tightening the cords at, and leaving a little gap in between so that the spacing is right to create a netted effect. So next we're going to create um, another lark head knot on each side. So separate out the cords and we're taking the two central cords and we're folding the left hand cord over the two core cords and the right hand cord will come underneath and then over up towards the left and we pull this tight. And again, make sure that the gap is the same so that you get that netted effect. And we're going to repeat this process with the right hand cord opposing direction and then we pull that tight. So remember, see how I pull um, tight the two central cords and then pull the knot tight around them and this will make it easier to tighten up everything. So I'm going to do the same on the other side. Separate these out. Take the two central cords and then we're going to create a lax head knot with those. Fold it over, create the first half of the knot and then just make sure that it lines up. And then we're going to do the same with the opposing cord and pull it tight. So next we are going to close off the center and we're going to take obviously the two central cords and we're going to use the left and right hand cord to close off the middle. So another lax head knot. So left hand cord first and then the right hand cord goes from underneath and out towards the left and then obviously again the opposing side right hand cord over the cores and your left hand cord from underneath out towards the loop on the right and then we pull that tight again see the gap's a little bit big here so then i just undo the knot slightly and i adjust where the cord sits. So next we're going to add more cords. So I'm just repeating the process um, and attach, fold my cords in half and use the lark's head knot to attach these. And we are going to be creating more lark's head knots. So at this stage I'm only using the four cords on the left. So you can see here the outmost left cord from the new knot has been set aside. So we're not going to be using this. And this is the same for each new row. So from now on, the outmost left cord and the outmost right cord is not to be used. So we're going to create a lark's, net, a lark's head knot with the next four cords. Pull this tight. And these cords will be set aside. And we're going to repeat this now with um, the cords on the right. So this is exactly what we're going to be doing throughout the whole design. So it's basically consisting of series of lark's head knots so we're going to be adding cords to each side and then with each new cord on each side we're going to creating a row of lark's head knots so the procedure is exactly the same throughout the rest of this design so we're going to be adding more cords 
So I've done another row with an extra cord and this gives me about four knots and I leave the outmost cord on the right and the outmost cord on the left side which is what we're going to be doing from now on. So each time we attach a new cord we're going to be leaving the outmost cord on each side and we're going to be knotting with the rest. So let's attach the remaining cords and do all of the knotting and this is what we will be left with. So I've got eight cords at the bottom or eight knots at the bottom rather and the next step is to close off uh, this design. So I'm using a Mikrama board just to separate out all of the cords so that uh, I can see what I'm doing. And all I'm doing is I'm taking the two core cords that we've attached all of our new cords to and I'm closing this off with two double half hitches. And this will tie them together and will allow us to create um, new sets of square knots. So tie this off and this these two central cords now will become the center for our next square knot. So bring down the cords that are already left on the side and we're going to create a half hitch or rather a square knot and this will be in line with the cords the knots that you can already see on the side. So just make sure it's roughly at the same level and we are going to close it off, pull it tight and you can see that this is now like a continuation around um, the knots already in place and from now on it's quite easy. We're going to create um, square knots with the next set of cords. We're going to take two knots from each, two cords from each knot as a central cord and we are creating a square knot. So pull that tight and just make sure that the spacing is the same to maintain that netted effect. So next we're going to rotate everything and we're going to grab the outmost right hand cord from the next square knot in line and the rightmost cord from the previous square knot and we're going to create another square knot. And this will create the continuation of the design. So again, make sure that the spacing is the same. Close off the knot. Pull it tight. And then we're going to rotate the design again. And we're going to continue all the way until we've done about two more rows. So we've got our knots created. And the last step is to close everything off. Obviously, you can go much longer than this and create a much deeper um, sort of netted section. But obviously, you would need to start with a lot more cords um, to, to be able to create this. So we're going to tie this off by grabbing all of the cords at the bottom. And we want to tie this off as neatly and as tightly as possible. So cut another section of rope and we're going to loop this around all of the ropes coming out at the bottom. So create another loop and feed the long end of the cord through that loop and pull it tight. And that's all it is. So feed the cord around the lot of cords and pull it out through the loop and pull it tight. This is exactly the same knot, which is a single half hitch that we did at the beginning when we created the sort of detailed pattern around the hoop. So just pull that tight and repeat this until you're happy that everything is nice and tight. You can, uh, if you're not really happy with the way the cords sit, you can adjust them by pulling uh, either at the bottom or at the top until they all set equally. So next, um, if you don't have any yarn, you can pull out a small section from the macrame core that we have and break a piece off and thread it onto a needle. So this is to attach the wooden beads. So what I've done here, I am going to the front where our last lark's head knot was created to close off the middle. And I'm going with my needle through that knot. It's a bit dark here. Apologies, the cord is quite dark, so you can't really see. But all I'm doing here is I feed the needle through the knot, put a bead on the needle, and then I go through the next knot in line, and I repeat the same process. Now you need to be careful. It's the most ideal it would be that you have your pot in place when you're attaching the beads because it's quite easy to pull too tight when you're adding the beads, and you can make the net 
uh, like a, an accordion I think it's called you can pull it too tight so that you will have to undo everything and start again so if you can add your pot and hang it from uh, a nail or something or in a doorway that you enables you to add the wooden beads when it's in place so obviously the last step is to tie everything off create a nice tight knot at the front and that's what it looks like so far so trim off any cord endings and we're going to trim off the cords from the binding at the bottom as well and we're just going to tuck these away so i'm taking a pair of pliers here and all i'm doing here is the cord end go into the knots themselves and this will make sure they don't come undone tighten it up and trim off the cord end and then we're going to feed it inside itself basically and that way it won't come undone there we go. and that's that so last step is to embellish the bottom so for that you obviously trim it to the length that you'd like it to be you can have it longer or shorter depending on your preference and i'm just um cutting off the end so they use a nice sharp scissors for that as well um which will make life a lot easier mine were a bit blunt here i couldn't find my good fisker scissors for some reason so once you've trimmed it to size i'm unraveling the cord and this will give you a much finer finish so i'm taking each strand and i am just untwisting it and that's all it is so twist it in uh, a clockwise motion in this case and it will unravel the cords and you can then once trim it once again and what i've done to finish it off is take a comb and i've brushed the whole lot which will separate out all of the fibers completely and then once you've done all of that you can trim it once again and that's that so that's the whole design i really hope you enjoyed this and thanks for watching